Hello, I'm Dr. David Perlmutter. You know, over the past couple of years, I've been talking about how vast is the human microbiome, and indeed it really is compelling when you consider 100 trillion organisms and all of their genetic material. It's really compelling in terms of just the, the data that that represents. But it's actually a, a much bigger picture that I think we have to embrace because it isn't just the human body that we're talking about. It is, in fact, the entire planet. Let's look at some research that was recently published in Science. And what you see here is an interesting report that was just published in May of this year in Science Magazine called Structure and Function of the Global Ocean Microbiome. Now, this is a really interesting uh, kind, uh, study because it looks at the microbiome, the bacteria and other organisms that live uh, in the ocean. And in this next slide, you'll see the various areas that were sampled to, to look at the various uh, bacteria and other organisms. And, you know, we talk about the human microbiome and how exciting it is, but really every corner of the world uh, has its own uh, microbiome, creating what we call a macrobiome, if you will. And interestingly enough, if you look at this next slide, how intriguing it is that there are these uh, temperature and uh, oxygenation differences between what goes on in the human gut and what we see in the ocean. The, the gut is an anaerobic, meaning a low oxygen environment that has a fairly constant temperature. In comparison to the ocean, that's an aerobic environment and the temperature is highly variable. But nonetheless, how exciting is this next quote from uh, the study? We identify ocean microbial core functionality and reveal that greater than 73% of its abundance is shared with the human gut microbiome despite the physicochemical differences between these two ecosystems, meaning that even though the gut and the ocean are dramatically different environmentally, there is this huge resemblance or concordance of the bacteria that live there to the extent that, uh, incredibly, we find genes in the ocean, in the bacteria, that have uh, both defense mechanisms as well as that are even involved in carbohydrate transport, not exactly things that we would think are necessarily required for living in the ocean. And similarly, in the human microbiome, there are genes involved in photosynthesis or the process of harvesting light energy and converting it into chemical energy, why would that be in the human gut? Well, next we see uh, the conclusion then of the study is that the fundamental way in which many microbes function has not changed much during their evolution. Uh, I would like to close this first section uh, with a great quote from John Kennedy, uh, who indicates that in fact we are tied to the ocean. When we go back to the sea, whether it's to sail or to watch it, we are going back from whence we came. Again, calling a great attention to the notion uh, that there is such similarities between what goes on in, in the ocean and even within uh, human blood. Well, more researchers, as published in the PNAS journal February of 2013, looking at the microbiome of the upper trophosphere. Now, the trophosphere is, the, uh, is defined as that area of the atmosphere that handles weather, that's involved with weather. And these researchers went up in a DC-8 and studied the organisms that live in the trophosphere and made some remarkable discoveries. That uh, the findings that, that they uncovered suggest that there is a microbiome and it is a dynamic and underappreciated aspect of the upper trophosphere where potentially important impacts on the hydrological cycle occur involving the cloud and the climate. So we are just beginning to understand the human microbiome and its incredible role that it plays in terms of health and our risk for disease. But it's really very, very important for us to take a step back and recognize that microorganisms are pervasive uh, in and on and around our planet and indeed play fundamental roles in the health uh, of our planet and in our planet's ability to resist uh, changes that may be detrimental for us. Interesting stuff. 
I'm Dr. David Perlmutter.